the context of its development was that we were using it to both um, understand the performance of our architecture and to vet the programming interface that was being designed in concert with Microsoft to make sure that it had the right um, kind of descriptive power and, and then ultimately to ensure that our hardware actually had reasonable performance. So what you're seeing here is lines that are being generated in the tessellation stage, the lines are being converted into thin triangles to represent strands of hair, and then the pixel shader is applying an isotropic lighting model to those hairs to produce something that looks, you know, pretty realistic. In addition to that, the compute shader is actually being used to model the physics of and the movement of the hair itself. You can actually blow wind at it, and the hair moves fairly realistically. I um, mean, and this drops back, in, back into place. And then finally, if we bring this closer to the camera. Turn the, turn the wind off. Yeah, good point. OK. So if we bring this closer to the, the camera, this is running at about, um, about 50 frames a second. If we now push it out um, into the background, the frame rate goes up um, to about 150 frames a second. Okay? So this program, uh, partly because it was designed three years ago and we we're experimenting with all of these different aspects of it, has adaptive level of detail based on the camera position, or, or if you prefer, based on the position of the character. So one of the, one of the effects of this is you can have many characters with hair in the scene, and because you can basically control the level of detail at which they're rendered, um, they can all have you know, fairly realistic hair. And then if a character gets into, you know, sort of up in your face and is occupying most of the screen, you can devote the processing power to that, uh, <coughs> that particular character. Are there any, any questions about this?